So then, there are a few transfers going on in the Overwatch League, and it's time to go over them. There's actually four to go through, but two of them are kind of connected because they're both relating to Atlanta Reign. Um, last time we looked at Shax and the uh, transfers of Valentine and Faith to Boston Uprising. This time we're going to be looking at the Atlanta Reign, the Washington Justice, and Toronto Defiant, who have picked up some of the uh, remnants of the Valiant people leaving, or also having a new person come into the league as well for the Washington Justice. It's going to be super interesting to see how these players do at these teams. But first of all, we're going to talk about the Swedish DPS player Sharp. He was at the Atlanta Reign. He is no longer at the Atlanta Reign. I think this is a a bit of a disappointing one, if, I, if I'm honest, because Sharp and Reddit never really got to demonstrate his his quality in the league. Atlanta Reigns coaches weren't exactly, uh, brilliant, uh, should we say? So, I don't think Sharp got to demonstrate his true potential at the Atlanta Reign last season, and right now, he's probably not going to get that chance in the league now, because, well, most teams are finished with their moves. Um, like, you know, you could see places for, like, for Sharp at, like, uh, London Spitfire or Paris Eternal, but they're, they're full now. They're not gonna, they're not probably gonna be recruiting yet another DPS player to add into their squads, especially with Paris on such a low budget and London having just picked up Shax. So it's unlikely he's gonna get another, another chance in the league this season. And I think that's really disappointing. He's probably gonna have to go back down to contenders and prove himself again to work himself, work his way back up, which is a really unfortunate series of events. And I think that's a bit on the heads of the coaches of the Atlanta Reign. But again, we will see what happens with that. And I do hope that Sharp does get the chance to demonstrate how good he can be once again in the league or in contenders and then eventually the league. Because I do think he's a good player, Sharp. I really do. So next up, we come back to the remnants of the Valiant. This is Lastro, the support player. He's going to be joining up with the Toronto Defiant. So this is very interesting and it adds to an already stacked support line for the Toronto Defiant in my opinion. Toronto Defiant already had Anson, J and Aztec coming in from Korean contenders. Aztec was fantastic for WGS Phoenix last season uh, when he was playing, especially in the second season of Korean contenders, where they actually won the second season of Korean contenders and Aztec looked fantastic against Runaway in that final. So I think that was a really good pickup in itself. Then they pick up Anson J from Element Mystic, a team that now is no longer competing, not for 2021 anyway. And again, that's another good pickup. Element Mystic, fairly consistent in Korean contenders, like to be near the top of things, and they always are. And that means they very often breed a very good caliber of player. A lot of them now, that we've seen before at Element Mystic, are now in the league. And now Toronto Defiant have picked up Anson J, and I think he will be a great addition. But to add to this, they're now adding Lastro, who was at the Valiant last season. And Lastro is one of the standout uh, players from the Valiant last season. He really popped off. We didn't know exactly what he would be like coming into this. He had a history at Sky Foxes and Stormquake, and like, it wasn't, let's say, like, an immediate, wow, this is going to be a fantastic support player when we saw him. But he came into it. And proved himself and he proved himself big time at the valiant and it, again well i mean the whole squad that the valiant lost is a loss in my opinion so i guess we can't say too much about that but uh, i still think lastro is an incredible addition to toronto define and when you look at their support line of lastro aztec and anson j now it's looking stacked that's looking stacked as hell um i think Honestly, they, 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 I think in scrims, it, it, we are hearing that Lastro is actually doing better and outperforming against Aztec. I think Aztec's favorable pick will be the Zenyatta. So it'll be interesting to see how they work this. I would not be surprised if Lastro starts for the Toronto Defiant based off league experience. But I would like to see Aztec get a go. I don't think Aztec should be a bench player by any means. And I think... I. Uh, I really like the supports at the Toronto Defiant. I mean, I liked them. I liked them before when they just had Aztec and Anson J. But now, uh, with the addition of Lastro, I think they're just looking stacked. I mean, when you look at this squad, you're looking at Aztec, Anson J, Lastro, Nice, uh, Michelle, Hisu, Sado, Beast, and Logics. Like, we're not expecting Beast and Logics to get too much playtime, but that all Korean side of Toronto, I don't know. That looks pretty good. The only, the only question you may have is nice maybe i think michelle will be fine so nice is a bit of a uh, a wayward one and we don't know exactly how he'll pop off but i think the support line will be consistent you've got sado and michelle in the tanks who should be consistent at least in the regular season and then you've got uh hisu who i think is actually a loss for the philadelphia fusion i really do so toronto it's a 
it's looking good guys it really is but now we move on back to the Atlanta rain the replacement for sharp will be Kai otherwise known as KSP um Kai coming in again another one of the remnants from the Los Angeles variant I'm glad that Kai has got another team is Kai better than sharp possibly Kai really did uh show himself last season and prove himself and he's a fantastic hit scan player uh, and I love to see a little bit of British influence. Not gonna lie, I'm glad to see him uh, stick around in the league because I don't think he got. I don't think he deserved what the Valiant dished out to him. I don't think any of those players did. So I think it's good that he gets another chance. A lot of these Valiant ex Valiant players are not going to get that, but I'm glad that he's able to prove himself once again. Um, I think it's yeah, um, it's not dirty necessarily from the Atlanta Rain, uh, but it is definitely a. Oh, Sharp, yeah, you're not that good. We want Kai, go away. We don't want you anymore. We wanted you before, but now he's available and we don't want you anymore, so go. So it's a bit of brutal business from the Atlanta Reign in some respects. Will it pay off? I don't know. I don't know whether Kai is all that much better than Sharp. I just don't think Sharp got the opportunity to show how good he was last season. And with, you know, Atlanta Reign, you never know. The coaching staff is still fairly similar to what it was. And so when we look at the rain, when they've got Pelican, they've got Edison, and now they've got Kai as well, it's a fairly, fairly small roster uh, at the rain. Like, they've got two supports, two tanks, and three DPS. It's a, it's a small rain roster. But the, the DPS on paper are good. Will they get the best out of them? No, they didn't get the best out of Erster. So, I don't know. I don't know from rain. It's difficult. And we will see how just how well they do at getting value out of these DPS players that I honestly think are good players. I really do. And they still have nice support, nice supports, the Massimo, Massimo and Arison, they're, they're, they're good. They're still good. And it's a decent tank line. It's a, it's a team that could overachieve. But will it overachieve with the coaching they've got behind them? I somehow doubt it. Anyway, the last transfer we're going to look at is an interesting one. Washington Justice have signed yet another DPS player. They take up their DPS count to four. So before they had uh, Jerry, Decay and Tuba. Tuba was their flex DPS player and they had Decay and Jerry who are those hit scan players. We all know Jerry coming in for the Boston Uprising. Uh, Decay already being there from st uh, being on the Zarya at the end of last season and doing phenomenally. We know how good Decay is coming from Dallas Fuel previous to that and Tuba was already at the Justice. Tuba we had our question marks over. He did prove, prove himself at the end of last season. But he wasn't great, really, for a lot of the season, and I only really popped off when he got to the playoffs. Um, and in that specific, specific meta that Washington were very good in. So we had a lot of questions about uh, about Tuba, and Washington Justice have said, it's time to answer those questions, because we're going to go, we're gonna go and sign Assassin. Assassin is a flex DPS player, Korean, from Runaway. So... This is really interesting. He's a hero pool of Genji, Echo, or Farron Tracer. He's a full-on flex DPS, and I think Assassin is a really nice pickup. Again, if you're coming from Runaway, you are a good breed of player normally, because Runaway are usually competing at the top end of Korean Contenders. And although on paper right now, Korean Contenders is not necessarily the best region in the world, because China technically are getting the win in the gauntlet against Korea. Team CC, thank you very much. Um... I still think it's a, it's an incredible caliber of player you're bringing in if you're bringing in players from like WGS Phoenix and, and Runaway. So, Assassin is going to come in and I think he's going to fill that very questionable hole in the Washington Justice's DPS line that if Tuba doesn't live up to what he needs to be, which we've seen him do before, then Assassin can be there. Assassin can be that DPS player that hopefully they can rely on. And so, when you start to look at this Washington Justice side, Fury, Rhea... And uh, and Mag on the D on the on the tanks. So that's actually a really fantastic tank line. Mag will know Assassin, which is actually again really great to see. Then you've got a DPS line of Tuba Decay, Jerry, and Assassin. Like that's a really nice DPS line actually. That's, that's I'm starting to really see a lot of pop off potential in that. When you see Decay alongside Assassin or Decay alongside Tuba, I'm starting to think there's a lot of potential in that DPS line to be a very good, very good. Then we look at the supports of Washington, and it's closer in Bebe. Like, that is arguably the weakest part of the team that we could we could highlight. I think that support line will be very single swim. It'll do well enough to get them in a very good place, or it will let them down and drag them down slightly. That's what I see from the from the support line of the Washington Justice. I think it's definitely the weakest part now. Now they've added Assassin to the DPS line, but I still think the, the Washington Justice stonks are going up. Are going up. 
And there, there are two teams then keeping a very close eye on. It's Washington Justice and Toronto Defiant, because I'm very interested to see how they do. I think Washington Justice have more potential, perhaps, than the Toronto Defiant, because they've got more unknown talent, like Assassin, like, uh, like uh, Mag as well, coming in and helping them out. And we know the pop of potential that the likes of Fury and uh, Decay have. So it's going to be super interesting to see how these teams integrate into the league for 2021. Both of them obviously going to be competing in the West region, so the American-based region, which gives them a slight bit of an advantage. They were going to find it tough if they went over to the Eastern region, but they're not going to do that. So I think these are two teams, Washington and Toronto, that we could see nearer the top of the Western region. And it's going to be very interesting to see quite how well they do. They're probably not on shock level, but can they compete up with the likes of Dallas Fuel? Dallas Fuel looks shaky in the next cup. So it's going to be very interesting. And I'm st starting to think there's a lot of very evenly matched rosters in, in the Western region. It's going to be very hard to power rank and very hard to call ahead of the season, which is not that far away. It's not that far away anymore. Okay, so I'm going to leave it here for this one. We're going to look at more DPS stuff in the future, actually. And it's going to be super interesting with more content coming your way, more power rankings, more videos about the Overwatch League, etc. And Contenders is not that far away either. So look out for that coverage as well. I know the equivalent of Open Division in Korea has already started with interesting teams like Korean, uh, a Korean version of Team CC coming up and a team that contains both Dreamer and Adam from the uh, XLA Valiant roster, which is super interesting. We're probably going to see a bit of them in Korean contenders coming forward. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here for this one. All the socials are linked in the video description as per usual, all of the stuff to Illusion, which again, we just announced a new team if you want to be interested in that and a new platform as well. And my personal socials and YouTube socials are also down in the video description as well. But for now, thank you guys so much for this video. If you'd like to give a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. See you then.